Put a bit of humour into it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's. And make it fun. Make it... Uh, there's a serious bit in it, but make it... Make it fun. It's not all of doom and gloom. But let me put the a snag into it. It's not all rosy either, but... You can't... You can't move out of a place and... Thinking, oh Jesus, I... I if I want milk tomorrow, I'll have to be going downtown or go down and me. Or if I, I, if I follow the church, Jesus, there'll be no one, there'll be no one to come and get me. Or if you fall out, out of a chair, get back into the friggin' thing, you know. If they, if they, if something doesn't happen straight away that they want to do, I see them fall down and get depressed over it. But then I've seen them get back up there and they go and they make sure and get what they want to get. And um, the fright, the fear is gone out of it for them. They're not afraid now to make sure to keep speaking up their voice and to keep speaking up to make sure they get what they want. And I give, don't be afraid, whoever is, don't be afraid. I was afraid at first, but I got used to it. And, he, and from moving out from my teacher home, well, it's the best thing I ever did because don't be afraid whoever wants Cork, Dublin, anywhere in the city. Don't be afraid. And, and if you, if you, family asks you, Keep doing it with it. I don't give it. Don't be afraid to speak up to family. If you want to speak up to anybody around the country, any that's all. I think that advocacy is a really important part of the process. It's certainly something that uh, people have had great benefits from. Uh, in our case, in terms of moving from the Barrett Cheshire House into the community, there was a number of different advocates involved. Some of them were family-based, some of them were citizens' advocacy, some of them were just maybe advocates around a simple piece such as financial advocates. But what it does is it enables people to have an independent voice to bat their corner, if you like, and uh, an organisation such as Cheshire, which is a big organisation, needs to have some somebody that's in oppositional tension to it as well. And advocacy provides that space. Um, I know that for people that have moved into the community, they found it a very important part of their support network to have somebody in such a situation. Generally speaking, advocates have assisted people across a range of things, such as, as I mentioned, financial independence, maybe finding out some more information about their medical appointments, or maybe negotiating with families who might be in some way in resistance to people wanting to move from congregated settings into the community. In all, I'd say their role is very important. Well, the role of Cheshire in supporting people to move into the community is number one, really getting to know the person. So 
a lot of time that staff spend with individuals is attending to their care needs and they often don't have a lot of time to really get to know who the person is, what their gifts and talents are, what their life experiences are and what their dreams or wishes for the future might be. So the first part of the process is really building up a relationship with the individual, getting to know them really well and discovering how and what it is they want in their life. So a lot of times people talk to us about what they don't want, but it's very hard to be clear about what you do want when you've had very limited opportunities living in the group home. I am I am very good I am very good day workers. They care for me and I have a lot. And I am very good I am very good my body I'm very good today. Because they give me a lot of, a lot of help. And then I have a lot of help. And then I have a lot of help. What we have found in Cheshire over the last number of years as we've supported people to move from the group home into their own home in the community is that it's been very difficult for families to see that happen and it raises a lot of emotion for families and usually families have told us that they're very scared, they're fearful for their family member, they're, they have a sense that perhaps the person is not able or capable enough to move and they can't see what the support would look like or what the person's life would look like when they move. And what we've done and how we've worked with families to address some of those problems is to keep working through their concerns with them and with their family member to make sure we really understand where people are going to be vulnerable and how we put safety mechanisms in place to make sure that people are always safe and that we can support people around their health and we can provide support for people to live a good life. Independent living has enriched my life so
I see it now in the community. They are living their own lives. Okay, it's still not 100% there yet, but um, it's, it's, it's a million times better than the way they were living. A million times better. I've, I've, I'll give you one example. I have seen a person who on numerous occasions we thought was, was dying and would just get up in the mornings and go from the shower into, into another room and sit on a chair all day. And um, he, would, he, had his, he would have a computer, he, would listen, he looked music. And um, again, six o'clock in the evening, he would be asking the staff, when is your break, when is your break? I, I want to go to bed, I want to go to bed. And this would be about half six in the evening. And the minute we'd come back from our break, I want to go to bed now. And that was the life was just going into this chair in the evening then going back to bed and like this person reads a lot too and would just make himself cozy in his room and I realize now he was waiting to die he had nothing to look forward to in the way he should have been looking forward to every day and he'd accepted this and the reason I'm giving you this example is this person is now out in the community with a whole new life, who goes out every single day. When he was in the Barrett, he didn't go out every single day. He goes out every single day. He decides what he's going to do. He's even started to re buy the paper every day. And I'm saying, oh my God. Um, he's involved in the world again. He knows what's going on in the world again. And he's not waiting to die anymore. He's living his life. Follow your dreams. Follow your heart. Go for it, follow your dreams, follow your heart, because at the end of the day you only have one life, so make the most of it.